Good morning, everyone. Welcome to RadioSilentPlay.com. I am your moderator for today on Thursday, July 16th, 2015. Let me start off by saying I am not a financial advisor. Please do your own due diligence before trading any stock or options. Trading stocks and options inquire lots of risk. Okay, so I'm back from hiatus. Um, just coming back from um, from Mexico. We were out in uh, in uh, Cancun area. Um, traveled and we actually went out to uh, the Yucatan Peninsula and visited um, many know as, as the Mayan uh, pyramids. Okay. Um, the reason I bring this up is because uh, you know a lot of people believe that the Mayans were were you know were just primitive, and um, many people don't don't understand um, too much about you know how they came and and how you know advanced they really were how how technical they were how uh you know they were very methodical and they used um you know mathematics as a form to to actually uh you know uh, pinpoint the time of, of when rain came out uh the sun and um they utilized this as an advantage okay a lot of people believe that some of these these emperors were gods but they actually just just knew how to utilize the information that they had and they were just brilliant and in a sense you know they were able to accomplish so much um, you know a lot of people kind of uh, don't recognize them as much you don't really hear about them in the in the in the history books but if you ever get a chance you know I do recommend that that people especially traders go out there and the reason I sent sen send this out because it's something similar to what I kind of bring to the table and I don't want to sound too pompous in saying that but you know um, Sometimes we have this misconception that you always have to have just that that perfect winning trade, and people don't understand what what strategy and and what you know kind of uh, growing into that that setup or or learning that ability to kind of pinpoint or or see the best probability using math using um, probability levels buy zones how that really helps okay being away from from the market. Okay, gave an opportunity to kind of just just sit back and just have your setups kind of play out and, and do um, do well for you. And um, the reason I, I bring this up is because I've noticed that a lot of people sometimes quit. You know, they quit um, sometimes prematurely. They they don't understand that you know getting into a trade um, requires a good a good range of of, of risk and also um, you know, just probability, where I want to kind of position myself, how I want to scale, how I want to use, you know, the chart as, as something for me to kind of predict where price um, can go. And I, I think that the, the um, going back to the Mayans, these guys were able to predict, okay, um, when the sun or the equinox cycle would come in, where they would get um, rain where they would be able to grow their uh, crops and be a little bit more productive. It did take time for them, you know. These these cycles worked in in in, in different time zones, different hours, different weeks, different time spans, all utilizing math. And I think that that's what made them um, brilliant. You know, um, I think that um, what we see here now, especially in the stock market, when you're trading OTCs or when you're trading options, people are just looking for that one play and bang. They want it to just work out, and I, I think that that's the misconception um, that we have. And I just want to go over a couple of things, a couple of trades. Um, I'm gonna start off with um, the MU, um, some some options that I sent out. Um, the options that I sent out when I sent them out, um, they were a little tough, especially when you were getting in on them. When I sent out the FCX, it kissed that 16 level. We were looking for that 16 level kiss, and we were talking about this. You know, we, we, we saw that the markets were in a free fall. We saw a lot of um, uncertainty, especially with the Greece, with uh, uh, the Euro, um, them um, waiting for a vote. And then we saw China markets kind of pull back. But then we saw a nice jump in the FCX. Um, and um, we were predicting that this support was going to pretty much hold. And if it didn't, we were just going to kind of stop out. And if you notice here on the FCX, when we did mention that we actually had a beautiful jump here, it gave an opportunity to enter as low as uh, 16, and then it had a nice rally and hit a high of 17. Um, 
close to 1730 for a nice move on the FCX. Um, then um, we we mentioned um, the MU. We were talking about that 1819 level. We were seeing this bottom here. We saw the RSI down at 15, and we were talking about tr to traders. Hey, let's look at the MU for a potential uh, move, and that actually uh, triggered um, the MU. It actually triggered, and we scaled in. It gave us an opportunity to enter as low as 56. I know our entry here was at a dollar six. Then we entered a little bit more at a dollar, and then pulled back. And if you look at here on the MU, we had a nice jump the other day, and we hit that high of 1980. Okay, today we closed at 1889, but you're seeing that rounded bottom. So in the beginning, okay, we did enter a little bit higher, but it actually gave us an entry to, on the pullback, and we never closed below that 1750 level. So that's something I want traders to kind of understand. Um, for the SPY, same thing. Okay, the options alert was sent out for the SPY. We were talking about that 205.30 kiss on June 30th. We took the July 17, 212. Okay, that entered at 88. We added more at 50 cents. Okay, if we come back here on the SPY, okay, you notice we hit a high of 211.28. Okay, which gave us a great opportunity to lock profits today. Okay, now we had a little bit of, of information over uh, media that they were pretty much uh, rebelling there in Greece towards that vote. And I do think that they're going to probably vote uh, a yes to stay in the euro, which will break into new highs. But like I said, what we're basing our, our attention is what's happening now. And I just want traders to understand, you're never going to pinpoint that actual bottom. But what you want to do is you want to predict levels. And when we predict levels, we give you levels because we feel that these stocks have the potential to kind of um, set up. Um, now, an OTC alert that was given out was this 50% retrace of NAMG breaking below that 12, hitting that low of 5.6. And if you notice now, the NAMG hitting a high of uh, 10. Okay, the NAMG now hitting a high of 10. Let me just bring that up right now. Okay, so then MG hit a low of 6, then we hit a, a high of 10, and now what you're seeing is a little bit of a rounded bottom here. So we broke that 50% retrace level on the MG. Okay, and then what we did was we bounced to a high of 10, and now we're trading at 7, 8 range. Okay, this was the, the bid support here at 0005. It gave us an opportunity to enter at 6. Even if it was a slight move higher, it still gave an opportunity to kind of enter. We were talking about this. Pincher play HCTI at 35. Okay, this actually triggered, hit a low of 0 0.003. And if you look here at the HCTI now, the HCTI hitting a high of 0 0.018. So the opportunity is there. Now, is it a little boring for traders to kind of hold off and wait to enter these trades? Yes, it is. It can be boring at times. But boring is good in the sense that you're thinking like the minds. You're being patient. You're waiting for that water to come down. You're waiting for these cycles. Now, if you notice the HCTI is in, in a pretty much a pullback area for this 0 0.006 level. If you look at the 21 and the 8-day moving average, that re-entry is going to be there at 0 0.005 to 0 0.006, okay, on a 50 to 61% retrace level. What traders want to see now is look for that potential pullback down to these levels. If it does pull back to these levels, all you need to do is just place your stop close below 0 0.005 and then potentially wait for that pullback. If you see here, now you just got filled here. Okay, um, they do have news with a four, uh, Forbes 500 company. Um, they have in the works with uh, some contracts. So these are things that we have to kind of bear and look look into. Um, if you look here at the next stock, we gave the SYNG at 0007. And if you notice on the SYNG here, um, we hit a high of the SYNG, I'm sorry. We hit a high of 14, and now it's slowly consolidating with around the bottom as well. Hasn't touched that triple zero five level again. Okay, so what I want just traders to understand is when we send out these setups, okay, we're giving you guys at a good buy range. Okay, um, if you take a look at BGN, and we were talking about that 1217, and this is even beforehand when we sent it out at 10, and now it's trading from 50 to 25. We're talking about a three-week accumulation. And just like, like I'm saying, you have to be a little patient in here. 
If you're seeing now the 21 and the 8 day moving average is meaning right there at 0.002 to 21, and you're seeing this nice uptrend. Okay, if you break this this 100 day moving average at 26 and 32, you're looking at 0.005 to 0.0075. And if you're looking here, okay, you got a bit of around the bottom here. Okay, similar, very similar to the Sugo trade that nobody wanted to take when this SUGO was uh, trading 12 to 15. If you come over here, I'm going to look at the SUGO. Um, and it's still trading very, very well right now in a bullish flag pattern. We gave this out back when it was 10 to 25, okay, um, 15 to 25. And it actually gave us an opportunity to enter as low as 0 0.0011 when nobody wanted it. Since then, it hit a high of that 0 0.014 level. And since then, right now, it's in a bullish flag pattern. Okay, so what I want traders to understand is, yes, we send out levels, we send out stocks at, at trading levels, and and these stocks eventually kind of rally. When we gave out the ARCS, okay, the ARCS, at the time, there's no chart on um on um, on stock charts but if you look at the ARCS let's kind of look at the ARCS and what it did we sent this out it gave us an opportunity to actually enter um, the stock when it was at the lows here it hit a low of 22 and then we saw a nice high at 0 0.0045 okay just a beautiful move on the ARCS Okay, since then now it's holding and it's pulling back down to that 28 level. Okay, but it still gave us an opportunity for that 100% move because you had an opportunity to enter as low as 20, 22. We never co close confirmed bottom below that 25 level, which we gave. Okay, so back to these the, the setups here. We gave this at 0 0.003 to 0 0.004 and we never close confirmed below 0 0.003 on two consecutive closes. Okay, so... Um, these are these are trades that I want you guys to kind of understand. The CMGO when we send it out 15, 18, then we had a rally up to 45. Now it's pulled back since then because it's just broken levels. But we always give trades that give an opportunity to kind of trade and move higher. Okay, similar to the ASAP when we talked about the ASAP, we were looking at this pincher play, pulled back, gave a low at at 23, and then we saw a nice move up to this 0 0.008 level. Okay, the QLTS. QLTS was given at 0 0.002 to 25, stop close below 0 0.002, never did, kissed that 19 level, but now we're seeing it hit a high of 0 0.0048 now. Okay, so this is something that I want traders to kind of understand. And when I, I tell you guys, okay, about these setups here, you know, when you got the QLTS kind of pulling back and it gave an opportunity to enter at 0 0.002, even if it's stagnant, you still know you're buying at a good buy zone. Okay, if you look at the GQ, when we saw that 50% retrace at 15, we were talking about that 00911, and that's what it did. It, it tagged 911, okay, and now we, we're seeing that stock hit a high of 57 today. Okay, these are big moves on stocks that were given out at good potential buy zones. It's just the issue is that traders, what they want is they want that one stock, and they want it to be sent out as an alert, and for it to go 50 100, 200, 300 percent in a day. And I think that that's the misconception that you have in these markets. Sometimes you need for these these markets to kind of scale out, scale in, kind of grab um, a position in those areas. OK, so these are some some things that I want um, traders to kind of kind of understand. Um, I want to show you guys another another um, setup that I actually sent you guys. Um, Okay, this was sent out via a uh, mobile app and SMS. Um, let's see if I got this. Thing out. It's not it. Okay, so I sent out SIMH on July 9th. That actually kissed and it actually triggered today um, at 15. Okay, today we hit a low of 15. Okay, as you see here, you hit a low of 15 and then you close at 22 at the high of the day. When I did send it out, it gave an opportunity to enter 16 through 18 and then we tagged and tested that 0 0.003 level, then pulling back and giving that re entry level. Okay, another stock that I actually sent out to you guys is. Um, 
is the HCTI. I gave you guys that at 0 0.003, and then we had that high at 0 0.018. Okay, another one, scalp of the day, which is pinch and play, was MHCC. When the news came out, I told traders to keep an eye on that 0.01 to 0 0.013 and watch and be patient. And I, I mentioned that stop close below 0 0.009, which we never had. Now, if you look at the MHCC, okay, kiss that 0 0.009 level at 0 0.0088. And since then, today we hit a high of um, this 0 0.0165 level. Okay, you're talking about a 60, 70% move from that 0 0.009 entry for those that were able to enter. And if you see here, okay, you got a little bit of a W pattern here. Okay, so if you come here, you look at this, okay, you got a little bit of a W pattern setting up here, okay. So these are stocks that I want traders to kind of understand and understand why I'm sending this, why I'm sending the SMS at the same time, okay. If you look here, okay, you got a bit of a pinch replace set up here on the MHCC, okay. And this was a stock that was given out. Um, at a good at a good time I gave this July 8th 2015 and I told traders to watch that bottom okay I talked about the pinch play see so if some of you traders I understand that I'm sending out maybe a couple of stocks per but I want traders to kind of get these these levels okay and um, you know I, going out and and going out to Mexico and into these areas I kind of did a lot of thinking okay um, you know Rome wasn't built in a day, okay? Sort of what with some of these pictures, these things, these structures weren't built in a day. They took time, but they were all gave and, and were for a reason, okay? And if you look at these, there was it was very intricate, okay? And it was very well done, mathematically well done, okay? That's what I want to kind of base um, my setups, okay? I want to I want to base my setups as this, all right? Um, this Friday, okay, at 9.45, we're going to be sending out a new play. Okay, I'm going to look for the best opportunity for you guys to enter this trade, and I'm going to look for a best setup for you guys to enter this trade. Traders are welcome to, to look at the stock, okay, do your own due diligence, but at the same time, have an open mind, okay, because what I want traders to feel confident is, is in buying that, that, that stock at a good opportunity, but at the same time, understanding the levels understanding that we're scaling in, understanding what type of trade you're going to take. Set your parameters, set your setups, and understand what probability is, whether you're going to trade it higher or whether you're going to stop out and take a minimal loss. Okay, this is what trader traders do, profitable traders at best. Okay, so I, I just want to thank everyone for their loyal support. And again, you know, some of the things that we do are much different than what others do. But at the same time, we want to educate and we want to bring traders to, to understand the best possible potential setup that you can can make. And each time that you make a trade, I want you guys to feel confident in the trade that you make. Okay. Um, just just want to go over a couple other stocks. SNXG pulled back. He gave it an opportunity to enter again at that 0 0.0011 level. And today we ended up closing. Um, at 16 hitting a high of 17 if you would have entered at 11 to 17 you're talking about a 60% move this is an ATM uh, trade okay a stock that I, I continue to tell traders to keep in monitor is the BGNN a thinly traded stock that at any point can break out and see these highs of 0.015 to 0 0.02 okay these are stocks that I think have the best potential for for trades to go higher in in regard to any bid buy pressure okay and I just want traders to understand that concept. And this is what we bring to the table when we trade with RadioSilentPlay.com. If you guys aren't members of RadioSilentPlay.com, okay, you can always come and uh, join. Okay, um, just come to RadioSilentPlay.com here. And if you want to try out our free trial, just come over to free um, subscriptions and just hit that free trial um, button here. And then it'll tell you a little bit about what we do. And then you, you can actually try us out for free uh, with no obligation okay um, if you want to leave a comment there just comment down um, uh, on the comment box below this uh, YouTube and like us dislike us if you don't like us you know um, you want to share the video just go ahead and share the video okay I just want to thank you